Today, Queen Elizabeth II is the head of state of the great nation of the Hebrew Covenant called Great Britain. Her genealogy chart, according to the College of Heralds in London, traces her blue bloodline back to Abraham, who many modern scholars believe to be the Egyptian pharaoh, Amenemhat I. By connecting 22 dots, the true Hebrew and royal Egyptian identity of Queen Elizabeth II comes into focus. Number one, what is the stone of Jacob, a Hebrew patriarch, doing beneath the queen's throne chair? Number two, why was the queen crowned at her coronation ceremony on top of a symbolic Egyptian step pyramid? Number three, the monarch's crown has 12 stones at the base, each representing the 12 Hebrew tribes. The 12 stones of the 12 tribes were also worn on the breastplate of Hebrew high priests in Canaan. Number four, the Union Jack represents the reunion of the United Kingdom of the 12 tribes of Jacob, or Jacob. The Union Jack is red, white, and blue, the same colors as the three crowns of Egypt. Number five, the royal scepter originates in ancient Egypt and was carried by the Egyptian god Amun and by Egyptian pharaohs who called themselves the Son of God. The royal scepter is now carried by pharaonic descendant Queen Elizabeth II. Her scepter contains the world's largest cut diamond called the Star of Africa. Number six, the queen's punishing flail or whip is partially hidden under her arm. The flail or whip also originates with the pharaohs of ancient Egypt. Number seven, the symbol of the bee can be found within the queen's royal wardrobe. In ancient Egypt, bees were the symbol of Egyptian royalty as well as the symbol of Egypt. Number eight, the symbols on the British coat of arms reveal Britain's Hebrew origin. According to the Bible, the harp symbolizes the Hebrew King David. The biblical lion and unicorn holding up the shield symbolize the nation of Israel. The motto, Dieu et mon droit, means God and my right, indicating the divine right of the British monarch to an eternal throne. Number nine, the headdress worn by judges and the queen's high-ranking officials originate in ancient Egypt. Number 10, kilts like the one worn by Prince Charles originate with the Egyptian pharaohs who wore white kilts. Number 11, the hymn Zadok the Priest written by Handel was performed at the Queen's coronation in 1952. Zadok the Priest was the biblical priest who anointed the Hebrew King Solomon while the people cried, God save King Solomon, long live King Solomon, may the king live forever. God save Queen Elizabeth. Long live Queen Elizabeth. May the Queen live forever. Number 12. During the coronation ceremony, the Queen turns to face the four corners of the globe. The orb carried by the Queen represents the globe over which the monarch rules. Number 13, the monarch's coronation gifts of a rod, bracelets, and a ring are a reenactment of the Bible story of the Hebrews, Judah, and Tamar. Number 14, royal jubilees originate in ancient Egypt. Egyptian pharaohs celebrated their jubilees after 30 years of rule. In pharaonic tradition, the queen has celebrated both silver and golden jubilees. Number 15. Incest was practiced by ancient Egyptian royalty. Mothers married sons and brothers married sisters to keep the power and the money all in the family. Like their pharaonic ancestors, the British monarchy have a long history of incestuous inbreeding. Number 16, the corpses of deceased pharaohs were preserved and entombed beneath their pyramid temples. The corpses of 19 deceased British monarchs 
are also preserved in marble tomb slabs beneath the modern day temple called Westminster Abbey. Number 17. The ancient pharaohs advertised their power with their image on coins and stone monuments. The power of the queen worldwide is advertised with her image printed on more coins and stamps than any other head of state in history. Number 18. The structure of government in ancient Egypt was a step pyramid model with the grand vizier and priesthood one step below the pharaoh. Today's monarchy reigns using a much more sophisticated pyramid model of authority. Number 19. The Pope's headdress is strikingly similar to the headdress of the Egyptian god Amun. His bent cross resembles the scepter of Amun. Number 20. Like the Egyptian pharaohs, British monarchs wear signet rings, which over the millennia have been passed down from their Hebrew ancestors. Number 21. The British Mint recently printed legal tender coins called the One True Ring and the Ring of Power. On one side of the coin is Queen Elizabeth II. On the flip side is the ring from Lord of the Rings. These legal tender coins printed by the British Mint raise the disturbing question, who is the real Lord of the Rings? One ring to rule them all. The inscription on the ring reads, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness of their ignorance, find them. Number 22. The covenant that the biblical God gave to Abraham was a promise to make his name great and to make for him a great nation. Today, Great Britain is the only nation called great. In Hebrew, the word Britain literally means land of the covenant and British means man of the covenant. How on earth did the Hebrew throne of ancient Egypt and Canaan end up in Great Britain under Queen Elizabeth II? Historically, a series of powerful invaders, the Philistines, Assyrians, Babylonians, and Persians, conquered the land of Canaan, which the Hebrews called Israel. The Hebrew tribes of Manasseh and Dan joined forces and became the Macedonians, or Macedonians. They fled to Greece with their gold and their riches. They wore white kilts like the Egyptian pharaohs, played goatskin bagpipes, adopted the Greek culture, and settled along the river Danube, which they named after the tribe of Dan. By 322 BC, their leader, Alexander the Great, reconquered Egypt and appointed his general, Ptolemy I, as the new Hebrew pharaoh of Egypt. Cleopatra was the last in a succession of Hebrew Ptolemy kings. Although Cleopatra is considered to be the last of the Egyptian pharaohs, author Ralph Ellis claims that Jesus was the last of the Hebrew pharaohs of Egypt. Jesus, a pharaoh? How is that possible? The historical facts show that the last pharaoh of Egypt was Ptolemy XV, who was nicknamed Caesarian or Little Caesar. Born in 47 BC, Caesarian was the son of two of the most famous parents in world history, Roman ruler Julius Caesar and Egyptian pharaoh Cleopatra. When Caesarian's mother, Cleopatra, proclaimed herself to be the reincarnation of the virgin goddess Isis, Caesarian became the son of a virgin mother goddess. When Caesarian's father, Julius Caesar, was elevated to the status of God by the Roman Senate, Caesarian was recognized as the son of God and heir to God's kingdom, the Roman Empire. <laughs>